Okay, we're live. Let's do a quick audio check as always. I didn't hear that. Always. <laughs> there we go. All right. It sounds pretty okay. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Dougie O'Brien and we are continuing to plan out our resource uh, resource creator. One small thing I'd like to note here, uh, if you guys haven't watched the latest dev stream, I would recommend at least watching the leaks. There's a extra large wind turbine coming and then missions. So kind of like you interact with your the base thing at the very beginning of the game that you get and you can supposedly like pick missions from it. So looking forward to that. All right. Let us get started here. Okay. It's a little hard streaming on YouTube with the default OBS because it doesn't have all the uh, features that I want from it. So uh, I'm just using the YouTube studio, whatever it's called, control panel. That's a lot more better. All I want is to see chat. That's it. That's all I need. Okay. I remember we had a lot of issues that we kind of had to fix on the production side. So let's kind of figure that out again. Uh, the one mistake I made was I thought this arm was part of the process. That is incorrect. This arm is always on. And these arms flip based on the state of the storage buffer right here. So let's see, waiting for storage to empty. Mm. Just take that off real quick. No, oh, yeah, this is correct. And if this is waiting for it to empty, what I have to do is put a scrap on here and then turn this arm on and then it will start loading the scrap off of this platform onto this trade platform and it'll grab the last one off but it can't transfer it over because for resin uh, it'll be filled with four scrap on the trade platform. And then it will activate the trade platform. It'll turn this arm off and it'll turn this arm on to start loading. Now, when it loads the scrap off of this trade trade platform, this platform here, it'll keep loading until this is filled. And then that will stop when this is full. And then it'll start loading again. But it can only load when the resin is completely off. So. It should work. Let's give it a go. Test this out first. Um, did I have a piece? Ah, oh, I already had a piece of scrap on there. There you go. Let's take that off. There you go. There. Now the trade platform goes off. It's going to return with resin. See, as you can see, the trade platform takes a long time for it to come back. It's the bottleneck in your production line with, with scrap usually, so that's why you want it to make sure you're maximizing your returns. Oh, why did this arm not turn on? It should be connected. Uh, at us. Waiting for storage to fill. Maybe it didn't get triggered. We'll try again. All right. Sometimes the 
connections are not touching the proper item, so you have to make sure that it's working. Alright, now as we can see, uh, this arm turned off when it got filled, and this arm turned on to load onto here. So that part is working just fine. Okay, I have an idea for um, how to turn it on or off. Uh, we could basically control this by making sure that the buffer is being loaded. So for that, yeah, we don't need this. Let's keep it as simple as possible. So when we activate... Yes, this will work. So when this is not full, it should trigger this arm. From a off state to an on state. Let me just make sure this is at uh, not full. Waiting for it to be not full. Yeah. Okay, if I take this off. Does that work? And then when it is full, it should stop again. Perfect. Alright, we have what we want. I guess this part will always be on and then it'll stop producing when A, the storage is full so it cannot unload the resin, which will provide or, you know, just built-in logic like that. Or, uh, it'll run out of scrap and we want it to stop producing. So that's one way we can do it. I guess theoretically speaking though, uh, having it always load scrap is okay. There's no, there's no logical reason to stop it, uh, based on this. We don't need a sensor, because it'll stop when it's full already. So, let's get rid of this. We don't, we don't need this. If you add logic when you don't need logic, you're just creating more points of error, uh, more possible points of failure. So, yeah, let's just get rid of that. We'll always just have this arm on. Okay. Yeah, alright. That, that works. Sometimes I overthink things, but yeah, we don't need this. I will keep this here as an example of what you could possibly do for a certain controls for logic but this is this is all we need right now okay all right yeah this is the buffer method for loading and activating trade platforms if you guys want to copy it it's very simple uh you don't need this on a platform trade platforms don't need power to operate but basically you have two arms and a buffer unit with the same number of slots that uh, you would need for scrap to completely fill the trade platform, which is four for resin. It's different for other materials. You got to take a look at it yourself. The hardest ones are like hematite, which is six. No, really, no real platform or way you can get six. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to get six. Anyways. <laughs> You do this, you put the number of storage slots or platform slots right here, and then you put a storage sensor here, and then uh, just make sure to fill, pre-fill the trade platform with one scrap, and then turn this arm on, and then and this storage should be full of scrap. It'll start loading. When it's empty, it'll turn this arm off, it'll activate the trade platform, and it'll load this arm again. It'll fill it, and when this is filled, It'll turn this off. It'll turn this arm on. It'll also activate the trade platform. But, uh, it'll, it'll either be in space or have no scrap on it. So, that's why it works. Alright. Oh, shoot, I forgot to, um, put in the game title in my stream. My bad. All right, we have that done. We have, now we need to work on scrap production 
and find a way to distribute it across multiple hmm. <sighs> this doesn't work either I, I can't put four LRCs on a hmm. okay I have to do the same method where I can only afford to use two Oh man, there's just too many things to plan out. Okay. That's why I usually don't stream the stuff. I just uh, make a video and then you guys see the finished product. But sometimes it takes months. Like my base took many months to build. Uh, collecting hydrogen took many months. I, I don't think people understand. That's why, like, when I see people who say, Ah, oh, I collected 100,000 hydrogen in a week. And I'm like, yeah, you, you use creative mode for that. I, it took me many months to collect. Uh, I got up to 27,000 hydrogen in a normal save file. Uh, and that was before creative mode came out. And it took forever. Like, I had to... Build a gas farm in Vicenia, and then just the transporting alone took so much time that I developed a system. Basically, I had packagers, and then I would package up the silos here, which would drop the hydrogen immediately. And then, um, yeah, and then I built like a little platform so I could put the shuttle there, and it'll just drop. I mean, it's like a hole in the ground, basically. Uh, that that took forever. Building enough RTGs, all that sort of stuff. So I know from personal experience how difficult it is to collect a lot of hydrogen. And I keep accurate track too. So every time I brought a shuttle load, I would, I would make a tally. And then I knew exactly how much I brought over. But yeah, the stuff like that takes a lot of time. Like a lot, a lot of time. Okay, let's... Uh, how do we do the... Oh. Ch chillax arm. <laughs> Alright. Do I have a copy of the resin silos? Yeah, yeah alright, that's awesome. Okay. Oh, it's about Olivier. Welcome back. Sorry, let me put... Okay, enable time stamps on chat. Yeah. Oh, I responded way late. My bad, dude. My bad. Got a little lost in uh, thinking of what I should do next. Apologies. Okay. Well, actually, I think I can, uh, do I, mm -hmm. it's fine. Nah, thank you for saying it's fine. Yeah. When you're streaming, usually when you don't respond to people right away, they just leave. So you have to be on top of uh, replying to chat. Okay. Question is, do I need four LRCs here? I think the answer is no. So we're gonna take these off. It doesn't help me in any way. It looks nice, but it doesn't help me. Okay. All right. Yeah, look forward to the update. I don't know when it's coming out. I gotta watch the VOD. I was in the beginning of the dev stream for Astroneer, and then I had to bounce because I was streaming myself. And, uh, yeah, some, some new things coming in. I think the goal for the mission stuff is to provide single player content 
with progression so that you have a reason to come back to the game and i think that's a great idea because i've noticed that for me too before i got into no man's sky and production lines and base building uh for sandbox games i didn't want to play it because i got bored so fast even if you it's really hard to create a goal for yourself and then stick with it because there's nothing in the game keeping track of your progress so the reward in is in achieving your goal whatever it was and it's not as good as the game telling you that you did something i know it's a very simple difference but i've noticed that for like i don't know i don't know the numbers here but i'm just guessing maybe like 80 percent of the players uh once they finish the main single player campaign they just leave so if the game provides some incentive it tends to have people stick around a lot more longer so i think that's a great idea i wish it didn't have to be that way though but i understand completely um like whatchamacallit you want to see like a bar fill up you want to see like things being unlocked then it just creates like a dopamine response where your brain's telling you oh, I, I i did something you know so it's part of game design unfortunately you just can't create a game for the sake of having fun it has to have some sort of reward system in place or progression system it's like legos you know <laughs> I would say I think a good comparison is Legos like you're supposed to build your own stuff with Legos but when I was a kid I just built whatever the manual told me to build and I played with it and then I and then that was it because I didn't want to ruin it you know but like making your own stuff with that and having your own fun is of course supposed to be the, the point of it very hard to do though very hard I understand though okay we're gonna design the scrap production area mm, we're gonna have to design the scrap distribution area because mm, yeah okay I'm I'm kind of envisioning a long snake of auto arms uh, I can deposit scrap with intermediary buffers um, okay it's a long build <laughs> it's a long build we don't need this all right all right let's try it so coco yes you, you did make it hello there how are you doing this fine weekend so i'll try to keep my stream times consistent i think i'll do it at uh 12 p.m u.s central so let me know if that guy's uh if that time doesn't work out for you i'll change it but Try to be more consistent. All right. Okay, so scrap, scrap production. Okay, let's change this. See, I don't want it to be too low. We're probably gonna... Oh, <sighs> there's two ways we can do this. Work or no work. We're gonna do no work because I don't think anyone wants to do work. So, we'll base it off soil canisters. As of now, it's not, it's not the most efficient way to do it. I'll increase the size just for this. Doing really good. Nice. Work is boring? Yeah, let's not do work. The only work I want to do is dig some soil. You know what? I actually don't want to do that, but you have to do that. So I'm hoping they automate that sooner or later, to be honest. 
Yeah, I hope everyone's 2021 is going well. My 2020 was actually not that bad. It could have been a lot worse. And just planning out a workspace. I know it's lame, but you gotta do it. Really hope they make uh, True Flight a lot easier. <laughs> I just wish there was a flat tool, you know? Like the alignment tool works based off of your... Your direction or orientation to the core. But what I wanted was a... a tool that you add to your terrain manipulator that will just make it flat based off of one angle so just always be flat it's just a little OCD about this kind of stuff I hate when it's bumpy always bothers me you can't get it perfectly flat unless you're on a true flat incline which is uh doesn't look good if you're not on the, like the north pole or south All right. I think I'll lower the brush speed to 50, maybe? There's a brush deform speed that is perfect for keeping everything the same. I think it was 8, to remember. Anyways. As long as it's not lumpy, that's all I want. Work is so boring for you that instead of digging soil for less than a minute, you scrapped half of your buggy. Are right, fair enough, man? Fair enough. I respect that. I can respect that. I think the most important and underrated step of building any build is to make sure the ground is flat. Kind of seem to skip that step. I do that too. I don't say, hey, make sure the ground is flat when building. Because it's boring. No one wants to do it. Especially in non-creative mode. Oh, such a pain, dude. <laughs> Cause you don't, you don't, you can't change your brush speed or your brush size or your brush range. It's it's set to default, and default is not so good. Okay. It's it's sort of flat now. If you look closely, like right here, that's a different angle. So to flatten this, I would have to redo the entire thing. Like it's changing here. Um, I go over this, it'll it'll change it. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. When it's true flat, uh, it works perfectly. In fact, it's the only time it works perfectly. But you just kind of have to live with this a little bit. Alright. Also, you get this sort of thing going on, which I really don't like. Right now, we're angled from the core. Let me see. Yeah, we're slightly going into the core at this rate. So when you place a platform down, it doesn't recognize that. So it just starts to sink into the ground a little bit. Uh, it can't be helped either. So drives me insane though. All right, we're going to plan out our scrap production. Uh, I had it going here. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to build a new one over here. Um, we're going to have to test out load balancing to make sure we're at 100% efficiency or close to it. What I mean by that is... If you guys have ever played Satisfactory, the number one rule of thumb to follow is your your input matches your output. That way, you're not wasting materials or time. So, 
if you put in four resin, you should get four resins worth of product out of your production line. If it makes more, you're underutilizing your production line. So you just want to kind of test that out a little bit. Okay. You can also make sure that no resource is piling up in the middle of your production line. That means something is slow. Okay. All right. Oh, that noise. There you go. You don't understand how annoying that is because uh, imagine, imagine having like, I don't know, thousands of canisters of hydrogen just hitting each other and making that noise over and over again. It gets deafening. All right, let's uh, let's build this up. So I'm going to build a lot of scrap. We're going to have to power this whole thing. I think the trade-off is I don't think I'm ever going to be taking a lot of resources at once. Maybe if I'm building another base. But the only time I can think of is after everything's built. When a new update comes out with new items, then you're going to want to build a lot of stuff. Like but you want to build everything new kind of little around with it so or events where you need packagers or some sort of material so okay I'm gonna change my breast size now back down go on out 180s what they use I have to watch the video again all right we need soil input Always use extra large platform C's as the base. Okay. I want this aligned, so I'm gonna go. Here's another trick if you want your base to be aligned. I don't use this myself for my own base because it's too much of a hassle. But let's say you want it to. Again, shout out to Exotic Kitten. She changed her name to, I think, just Bunny now. But yeah, um, where's the packager? Is it here? Yeah. She taught me this trick. Just package up the platform. Make sure the orientation is correct. Snap it into the platform, and then when you take it out, it's gonna be either 180 degrees or 90 degrees to it. So, and you can move it around freely. You hate fall damage? I I use jetpacks, so I don't have to worry about that. Jetpacks are amazing, life changing. That's the one thing that I'll recommend getting after you get RTGs because. Uh, it, it makes the game so much more easier. In my opinion, my playstyle is 100% jetpacks. You do need a lot of hydrazine though, just, just letting you know ahead of time. But if you have a scrap farm, it's no problem. Is this, there's something on my desk? Couldn't... Yeah, uh, well, you don't take fall damage as in you can activate your thrusters right before you land and you won't die. So I can show you real quick. Um, let me see real quick. Yeah. It's a very easy way to... You just literally thrust a little bit.
this isn't frozen. I'm just waiting for it to load. Uh, when your save file gets massive, it just stops. Just stops loading quickly. There's just so many benefits to jetpacks. All right, so let me make sure I have enough hydrazine. Yes. So watch this. This is my normal save file. Uh, I can get pretty high. They were frozen? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I think that too sometimes, but here we go. So make sure you keep backup hydrazine on your backpack, otherwise you're gonna die. Alright, we get here, we hit the roof. We're just dropping, and then you just like, just, you know, just little tap it. I, uh, I could have tapped it more. I still took damage, but I didn't die, so. It's very handy. There's so many benefits to this. Like, my main playstyle, instead of using rovers. A lot of people ask, why don't you use rovers? I'm just like, I use jetpack and shuttle. It's so much more convenient. Oh, I can do this. So I just do this. You don't have to use shuttle. Shuttle gives you oxygen. Uh, I've used platforms before. You can use this method with anything. In fact, you can walk. So here's a pro tip. Uh, in the very beginning, when you don't have a buggy, I carried around a large platform B. I just walked with it because you can walk with platforms. And you can just take it up and you have to juggle it, which is why I want the jetpack because you don't have to do this. But this is how I traveled. In the very beginning with no car. I just... Because I want more storage space. If you add an oxygenator to the platform, you get oxygen so you don't have to have tethers. Uh, that's very handy. If you have a power production unit on it, you get power from it. It's, it's just handy overall. So I've been using that method since the beginning. And I can't go back to anything else like... For me, it's the way to play. Uh, I'll, there's two people, two groups of people I've noticed. It's pretty much they use the rover. Like almost everyone uses the rover, and then a few people use the shuttle, like I do. Uh, there's some downsides to it. Like you only get two large slots, right? So you can't really. It's really hard to use modules on your shuttle if you want to do more than one thing at the same time. But other than that, like, I, it's very useful. So I highly recommend it. Like, I can, I can do a lot of things with this. Life without a jetpack is, uh, feels very slow. <laughs> okay. Hey, if you have any more questions, let me know. I'll try my best to answer it. Um, well, let me see. I rover train is very efficient, though. Like I can't, I can't bash that. Uh, mine's not built. I think it's on a different planet, but I had a scrap rover train. Um, there's certain mechanics. You think it's four, three? I forgot what the max is. But you can make your rover train longer if you attach a winch to the back and then winch the rover there. Now obviously you can't drive super fast otherwise it'll detach but you can extend your rover train. Uh, the one attached by the winch is just storage that you have to access manually because things won't transfer. But uh, yeah that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, it, it lags when it saves too. It can't be helped. Okay, let's go back to our creative save file. Yeah, no problem, dude. Yeah, I think Jetpack is a game changer. They added that for an update like a while back, but it wasn't in the base game and it's one of the best updates they ever made. 
<laughs> and then automation obviously changes the game too to a whole different level but um yeah okay All right, so we're gonna do scrap production today. Let's see how far we get. Probably not that far. It, yeah, you know, there's a saying where it's like you don't want to see the sausage being made. That's exactly <laughs> what's going on here. I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes, like really dumb mistakes, and uh, I'm gonna have to redo a lot of things. That's what I'm doing in creative. Uh, I don't I don't prototype builds in regular anymore. It's just too expensive. All right, so we need. I was sort of half done with that here. Hmm. Trying to plan it out in my head. I need storage for both inputting soil and outputting resin. I'll use a. There's a large storage column. Storage cell of B. We'll use this. Okay. And then I could use soil canisters if I want. Uh, yeah, let's do that for the input. Although, I'm kind of wanting to split it in the middle. So I can have two sets of centrifuges going at the same time for one soil input. It just doesn't work for me. Let's, uh, let's make one then. Okay, all right. It's roughly aligned now in terms of rotation, but aligning to a grid, probably not gonna happen for a while. <laughs> I'm gonna lock this in place just for now so I can orient my other pieces off of this one. Um. Do that. I put the blue side on the side so you don't miss any resources. Like if this was like this, you might see it jutting into the centrifuge. It's a little hard to see. Okay. Okay, we're sending the auto spin. Okay. All right, so we got that. Now I'm going to add some medium storage sallows. And I can control the direction of the output if I fill the other slots with junk. This part is always a little bit finicky. Um, if I put... Can I use a... Can I use a... Medium resource canister? Would that be more efficient? That might be. In terms of controlling where it comes out from. Why don't we try that? I'm not sure if it's going to work. I 
where's uh MRC it's L okay yeah 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 I'm liking this a lot better I like silos better, to be honest, because, again, you can grab, you know, the max output at the same time if you have that many arms. <laughs> uh, resource canisters, you can only do one at a time. Okay. Enable output. Can an auto arm grab that high? I think it can. Uh, we'll test it out. Alright. Okay. Looks kind of like a... An engine. A cylinder engine. Alright. So this is where we're going to stick soil. But I want to think of a different method right now. I basically want one place for soil. I could use... Let's not use small canisters. It would overly complicate things. Actually, if this is it, it should be okay. I want it to be fully automated except for me dropping a medium soil canister onto a platform. That's all I want to interact with. So I want everything else to be automated. Mm. <laughs> That's going to be a little bit hard. Also, wait. If I enable output... Oh, this is not going to work. If I enable output, it'll just poop out. I'll just poop out the resin here, and then I won't be able to put the soil in. Hmm, how about resource canisters? You are not quite where I need you to be in terms of automated production. I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> Alright, yeah, medium salads it is. It's not perfect, but... You know, I, you won't believe the number of times where people are like, why don't you use a resource canister? And I'm like, it's actually not that good for production. It's good for storage and input or output at the beginning or end. We store that, but uh, <laughs> in between and not so great. All right. The problem, here's the problem. I need to guarantee that the resin outputs here so I can grab it. That's the problem. And I gotta figure out how to transfer the soil from one central location. Mm. Let's get this out of here. You're disturbing me. Alright. Uh. <laughs> Send help. That's why it takes months for projects, man. Planning this type of stuff out? Uh, okay. Let me just build a... Mm. Is that big enough? No, let's get extra large platform C.
I'm not really caring about the orientation of the red uh, arrows. Usually I have them pointing in the direction. Alright, no problem, dude. Thanks for dropping by, Olivier. Have, have a nice lunch or dinner or breakfast. I don't know what time zone you're in, but hope you enjoy your meal. I will still be here for approximately another hour, so. Catch you next time, then. I'll be planning out the uh, soil distribution center and hopefully get that going. <clears throat> yeah, as always, dude, if you got any questions, just let me know. I'll do my best to answer. question is how do I transfer this over one thing that I would love to see is input and output redirection so I think we need conveyor belts in Astroneer if you want to continue on like auto arms are good for platform to platform exchanges but if I want to carry something far away and just dump it we need conveyor belts Let's make it happen. Petition Joe. <laughs> Everyone go on the official Ask Me Your Stream and just be like, give us conveyor belts. What's up, Bentley? How you doing? Right now, I'm just trying to figure out how to transfer soil from one location. My end goal is to create a resource creator. And so I kind of want something like this. Just imagine a bunch of resources here. You're doing good. That's awesome. Glad to hear that. Uh, you just push the button and then you get that resource. So uh, I have different sections. You can copy this build however you want. This is the transfer section so i'm transferring the resin from storage you're gonna place a storage unit or a canister here and i'll just deposit it into that or your backpack whatever you want so when you push it it turns this on it'll deposit it withdraw it from this and then deposit it into an intermediary in case you want to transfer it somewhere else or you want logic and it deposits it off and then this is the storage area so you can just have replace this entire section with one auto arm so you don't need this and then this is the storage area where you have a a built-up storage of resin you, you don't have to use this you can use just one medium silo whatever you want and then here's the production side where this is what i use for almost all my builds uh it's scrap based so I'm converting soil to scrap and then converting that to resources. Uh, what you do is I have a storage sensor attached to this platform because it has four slots and I can only put on four scrap to get eight resin. It's max then. Max amount of scrap you can fit. And then so when this is empty, it'll trigger the storage sensor. And then what I'll do is it'll stop this arm from loading the trade platform. It'll load more scrap onto this. And then when it's full, it'll stop this arm. It'll activate this arm. So it'll start loading the trade platform. And then when that's done, it'll keep switching. And then this will be activated too. And it'll be activated twice, but once when it's in the air. So it doesn't do anything, which is what I want. And this will be always unloading resin. So I'll always have this storage full of resin, which is the goal. So I never, I'm never out of resources. And then from here, I have my scrap storage. The same setup as the resin. And then this is going to be fueled by my scrap production line, which I'm going to build today. Uh, so the goal is to have a system where you just, all you do is dig soil in your rover. And then you put it in, you just drop it in one area and then everything just runs by itself. That's the main goal today. So you, all you have to do is dig soil and bring it to your factory. And then it'll produce everything by itself. And then you just get resources on demand. 
So when you push the button too, I'm gonna have it attached to this. This arm, so I'll keep loading scrap. You know what? Should I just always keep it on? Yeah. I'm I'm just gonna keep it on. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we decided, yeah. Yeah, so if you got any questions, let me know. If you wanna see anything, let me know. This is creative. Creative mode, obviously. I'm not playing on my main save file right now. Once I have it planned out, I will uh, start building it in my main base. Okay. Yeah, this part... I don't... Anyways, yeah, conveyor belts. If we had conveyor belts, that'd be awesome. We also need... Um, it would be handy if you could link outputs and inputs like rovers. So for a rover, if you attach two rovers together, it can output to another rover. I don't remember if it can input to an... It can take a rover as an input. But it can definitely output to another rover. So, you know, that doesn't happen with platforms. It only outputs to storage units attached to it. It would be awesome if I could attach a cable of some sort. And then it'll be like... This is now an output. Because that would make it so much easier. So that's some ideas I had. Hmm. How would I, how would I do this? One central location. Unless, unless. It doesn't. It wouldn't work unless I use rovers. <laughs> I guess I answered my own question. We can use rovers as, pla as platforms, and then we you link them together. That might work. Uh, you know, let's test this out real fast because I do not want to use auto arms for transferring soil. It's going to take too long. Okay. Okay, a large rover. Where are ye? Wait, can I delete? Can I package this? It's always a little bit of a hassle to remove a rover, you know? I can't pack it, alright. Not gonna be happy with the appearance, but function over form is what I say. Alright, let's see. Uh, uh <laughs> it's just not gonna look good. Alright. I don't have enough slots on it too. It's the other thing. I forgot what is the max amount of rovers? Is it four or three? Find out. I wish you could have an infinitely long rover train. That would be hilarious. Yeah, okay, it's four. Hmm. Okay, so we can we hook this up to a platform? You, can you? I don't think so, right? Well, that'd be very handy if I could. Oh, you can! Alright. Wait, how does that work? I have so many questions now. The power only goes one way. Hmm. Hmm. I'm brainstorming here. Now, first things first, we'll have to determine if rover to rover is gonna work. Power generation. Wait, can I attach the max rover chain to a 
You can. Oh. Oh my. Oh my. Well, mm, I think we're gonna see a new form of base building soon. <laughs> Rover trains attached to platforms. I have to see the output and input transfer though. That's the main thing I'm concerned about. If that doesn't work, I, it's not gonna matter. It's a little bit of a hassle to stick stuff on silo sometime. Okay, that should be enough power for what I want to do. Okay. Question is, I fr I completely forgot r rover to rover interaction. I don't remember if you can have a rover as another ins input. Uh, I need some soil. Have some pre-filled canister somewhere. Uh, oh yeah, okay. I need canisters. Oh. I'm trying to shift click to drag an item to my backpack and it just sends you down. <laughs> Alright, probably should change that key binding. Alright. Mmm, it does not take another rover as an input. That is unfortunate, or is it the positioning of the rover? Maybe, I mean, no, no, okay, uh, unfortunate, that does not work then. But I'm pretty sure it can output to a different rover. Let's test this out real quick, I need to know for sure. It can't. I thought it could. Why am I remembering this wrong then? I remember scrap or soil being diverted to another rover. Hmm. Do I need a storage unit? This is not going as planned. Although I did learn you can hook it up to platforms now. So uh, that's going to increase the options for uh, base building. Let me see if I uh, do this. Hmm. Oh. Okay. I'll just do this and just observe it real quick. Ah, this is slightly disappointing. Although there is an added benefit of having stored power on the rovers, like a built-in battery. So that is a step up from platforms. Although you do lose a large slot when you link it to something, so. Theoretically, you can have three large slots open when attached to a, a platform or another rover. Hmm. 
Uh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> All right, I guess that's it. Mm, there goes my plan. I wish you could delete the whole thing. The resin attached. Yeah, there's so many things I'm missing to make production easier. But you know what? We can't complain about that. We gotta make do with what we got. Hmm. I think I'm gonna scrap the rover idea. I'll try with soil first. Let me see if I can transfer soil at the very least. It only works when... Yeah, I just remember like having a drill attached here and then resources going past that to other rovers, so... Hmm. It's got a small canister out. It doesn't work. Alright, I'm either remembering wrong or I just saw wrong to begin with. I, I don't know. Kind of want to make use of this for something though. Uh, like these rovers do have an advantage. What's up, little gamer? <sighs> I am a little stuck planning something right now. Mm. Is how you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for asking. I'll leave this here. Alright, yeah, we'll leave that there. Good? Uh, it's good to hear, man. Good. Alright, we gotta find a different solution to our uh, dirt problem right now. My problem is I want to deposit soil into one place and then it'll distribute it to other places by itself. And I really don't want to use auto arms and small canisters because that's too slow. But I don't I don't think I have a choice right now. Huh. <clears throat> Starters. Um, yeah, let's keep that there as an area to experiment with. Wait, I have an idea. What if I use a large sallow bee? Okay, if you got any questions on what I'm working on, let me know. I will go over it. Actually, that's too big. Larcello A. Some symmetry. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. Ah, 
Does it really matter though? It does not. <laughs> Alright. Why does it feel like the orientation is up? Uh, whatever. Okay. I guess I could have... I'm not gonna enjoy doing this, but... Oh, man. <laughs> uh... Hmm. I guess medium salads with soil canisters on them. I, I don't want to go that route though. It's going to be a hassle because I have to transfer the salads back. You know what? I'll just stick it on here. Screw it. Screw this. We'll just stick it on there. Yeah. I mean, it's just two separate platforms. Who cares, right? Not that big of a deal. Okay, I'm gonna need power for this. Let me snake over an extender. I probably shouldn't commit to a uh, placement yet because I don't I don't know how long it's gonna be to that. Okay. All right. Fine. We will use. Oh man, I, I don't know how to guarantee resin to not take those slots though, the back slots. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Oh. It already pooped off. God dang it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, that's primed and ready to go. Yeah, this is messy. I wish you could control where things output. Uh, anyways. That's gonna auto spin resin. And I guess I just have to stand here and place the soil salads myself. Again, I want it to be automated. Otherwise, it's not going to be as useful. I guess I could just dump soil into it. Like At least I can fit six medium canisters on their soil canisters. Remove some tedium. Okay, I guess I'll leave it at that for now. Okay, resin's coming out. Ah, let's see, this is not that great. <laughs> Alright, have some out of arms. I'm gonna have to test how high it reaches. You know, I need four. We'll have to test this out. You know what? I can just build one side and then just copy it. I can mirror it. So I don't need to do this on both sides right now. Because it could be a bad build. Alright. Why does it keep flipping over? It's bothering me a little bit. Is there a, oh, there's some... Yeah, it's just the terrain problem. Can't be helped. Okay. Now you have medium platform A's for this. And the, uh, I, like, I appreciate they made 
a whatchamacallit platform just for auto arms but it's not really useful because you need to be able to position multiple arms close to something so I still find that these little platforms are king okay you gotta place them real close to each other all right yeah I'm not sure if this is how like how high it is we'll find out though it's always an uncertainty as to where these outer arms will grab stuff from. The green circle is like that gives you a rough estimate. <laughs> Does not give you the exact location. Okay. Yeah, see I wish I had more finer control over placements. We'll try this first, see how it goes. It's locking in place. And to test this out, we'll just create uh, an LRC here. What's up, Grape? Okay, just gonna test this out real quick. I need to snake power here. I need an extender. How you doing, Grape? I might play like an hour of the cycle after I eat lunch. Let me know if you're gonna be up and I'll just stream it on Twitch. Or I could just stream it on Discord. <clears throat> oh, it says message hell for a review. Uh. I'll show it. Traumatized for life. You saw some puffer fish doing the dirty. Oh man. Why would you watch that to begin with, dude? Nasty. Uh, I totally lost my train of thought now. You're out for three more hours. All right. Mm, yeah, it's perfect. I can I can start streaming at three like normal, and then I'll just play for one hour because that'll be more than enough, and I can show you some strats. Uh, extenders. That's what I was looking for. All right. Wouldn't extenders be in the backpack tool slot? Like, right? I'll check more carefully. I am getting old. No, it's not. All right, we'll check here then. It was on TV? Oh, okay. What are they doing? They're rooting the children. Think of the children. <laughs> I extend this right here. All right. They're in the meeting catalog, you think? Gotcha, Coco. Thank you for the help. They were here. I, uh, I'm getting old, so I don't remember where stuff is. Navigating this thingy, it takes forever for me sometimes, because I don't bother to memorize the location of items. So I'm always looking for something. Every single time. 
<laughs> every single time I go in there. Even though objects I use well frequently, I still don't memorize the locations. You like Eternal Return? Nice. Nice. I actually think it's a decent game. I wish more people gave it a shot. What the heck? Is it too far? Alright. I think what it I think it's great in that it takes the Like you know that you're in there to loot items. Like a lot of battle royales, uh, that's what the game is about. Like that's how people play it. When you're not supposed to play like that, you always get confused too. Yeah, tell me about it, bro. Like everything looks the same. <laughs> how there's so many items. Uh, but yeah, like in Apex, you're not supposed to loot all the time. That'll get you killed. Like you just get. A loadout that you can use and then you try to do your best with that like and after that you go kill other people and steal their stuff you know you gotta level up your evil shields uh, you don't take too many fights though because you gotta keep track of how much meds you have but for eternal return uh, you just loot for the first you know however many minutes that's all you do and that's great I like that Everything looks the same. Well, you know what I mean. The holographs like this. It's just blue outlines. It's sometimes hard to see, you know, what it is exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, let me turn this off for a second. I want to see uh your resin distribution and what it can reach and what it can't reach. So, let's just keep that spinning for a little bit. And that's why I like this cycle too. <laughs> yeah, it's all blue, man. What if you're colorblind? And like it blends into the background, you know, like what if you think this background here, you can't tell the difference between the hologram and then this thing, it'll just look like a, a blue circle or a black circle, you know. Ah, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I'm losing my voice. People don't realize it, but uh, I do like a game preview stream in the morning from... Well, not in the afternoon. 12 to 2. And then from 3 to 7, I stream another game. Dark Souls or whatever I'm playing on. And that's like 6 hours of just straight talking. Wears down your vocal cords a bit. What's up, Argus? Going around, yeah. <clears throat> Stink of that song. Round. Make, was it? Round. Uh, I forgot. Not the wheels on the school bus go round and round. Not that song. The other one. Alright, dab a dab. <clears throat> I'm just waiting for this to fill just to see how much of this area I can cover with the auto arms. I need to know so I can adjust the positioning. I could have used the resource plant. It should have been way faster. But you know, sometimes I'm lazy. Alright, let's just get this going. And then I'll turn the center view just off. When you were setting up the battery power station at about the start, you're looking all day for the extra large platform B because the diagram is tiny. I wasn't able to find it. Yeah, I get you, dude. <laughs> I get you. I feel you, dude. Almost AK duckies. Nice, dude.
That's a lot. Oh man, I need I need more time. I need to work on game development. I haven't touched it in in a bit. Uh I did a little bit this week, the beginning of it, and I didn't touch it ever since because I don't have a lot of time. What is that? Oh, so like on Twitch, if you watch a channel that you're you're following, you get channel points for it. You just it's just based on actions, but like just for watching you accrue points over time and then you can redeem it so the streamer can set up rewards so you can name it different too since my name is ducky o'brien or my moniker not my real name right that's not my real name but i go by ducky o'brien on twitch so i just call my points ducks and then when he has 8000 uh you can request a game for me to play on stream now, I might not do it right away. It used to be that I would do it the next day, but I am very busy covering games now. So I will do it when I have a bit of free time. It's kind of my way of thanking people for watching. Uh, so if they want to see something from me, they can redeem 8,000. 8,000 takes a, a while to rack up. I might make it cheaper, but we'll see. Uh, and then I play a game on stream, whatever they want. I have... Just have like some tiny tiny rules. Uh, it, it it has it has to be a game that I own or free to play because I don't have a lot of money. So if they ask me to buy something expensive, I won't have the money to do it. And uh, it can't be too big because I don't have a lot of hard drive space. So like Call of Duty Warzone, I'm not gonna play that. That's what like 200 gigs, 100 gigs or something, something ridiculous, man. It's my entire hard drive. <laughs> Okay, you know what? This is perfect. It picked it clean. That's what I like to see. All right. Placement test is done. We covered... Well, I, actually, I was not watching... Shoot. I was not watching the arms to see if this arm was good. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, game should be five. 5k terabits you want me to make it more expensive oh you you think games should be that big uh uh oh, terra you mean terabytes right five thousand terabytes so five what's after terra uh is it peta yeah petabytes <laughs> Okay, let me retest this. I apologize in advance. Petabyte, alright, that's up, yeah. Have you ever had an 8 megabyte memory on PS2? Never ran out. Yeah, me too, dude. Uh, never ran out. It's crazy how... Well, back then, since they had a, a storage limitation in place, people developed around it. But now that like hard drive space is cheap, people are getting a little bit lazy. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Back in the good old days, you had to fit your game onto a DVD or a CD. If we're talking about PlayStation One or a cartridge for whatever system you had, so they had to cut down and make it efficient. But Man, you know, started out with, was the Final Fantasy VII had, well, like, was it four CDs? Three CDs? You know, when they figured out they could just make more CDs, I'm like, no, don't do this. Or PS4 Slim with one terabyte, so you always had half of your memory. Yeah, uh, for me, even a terabyte is, is too small because I have to. I play a new game every day for coverage if I'm lucky, if I get my requests approved, which I'm grateful for. 
Uh, my hard drive fills up super fast. <laughs> Help you get a fluffy kitty holding you down and you can't get up. I'm sorry, that's uh, no one can help you there. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna... Hold on. I know the inner arms work. Let's see the cover coverage range of the outer arms, right, real quick. Had to delete Ratchet and Clank to actually play other games. Nice. Yeah, you think the cat likes you? Definitely. Or, or the cat could be holding you hostage for money. You never know with cats. Wait, how big is Ratchet and Clank? I don't have any consoles. Uh, the latest one I had was a PS3. Slim and a Xbox 360, the newer model. Uh, after that, I sold all my consoles. Uh, I sold, I had a huge retro game collection of like 400 titles, mostly obscure role playing, Japanese role playing games on the PS2 and PlayStation 1. And they were worth a lot when I sold them, but they're worth even more now, which I wish I kept, but they were all sealed, mint condition, I was a collector, and uh, I kind of needed money, and I didn't want clutter, so I sold everything. So now I don't have any physical copies of games except for my PS2, my PS2 which is modded with the flip top, um, and then a copy of Katamari Damacy, Anyway, <laughs> 25 gigabytes. Wow, that's really big. Yeah, Astrid is pretty small. It could be a lot bigger. One petabyte SSD? Yo, that's gonna be so expensive, man. You know, I think you can you can just uh, duct tape a hundred, no, a thousand terabyte SSDs together, and then there you go. Uh, just thinking about the price is making me cry a little bit. <laughs> That's right, yes. SSDs in Linus Tech Tip server. I, I saw him use the PCIe uh, card where you, you put in M2s, MVMEs, uh, and he, I think he put in four or six of like the fastest one terabyte Gen 2 MVME and M2s on there, and it was super fast. It was, it was the Honey Badger. I don't remember what it was, but I was impressed. And I'm like, well, I am too broke to afford this, but this looks incredibly nice. You think, all right. I will take your word for it. I don't watch a lot of uh, Linus Tech Tips videos, but when I do, I'm always pleasantly surprised. Guy does good work. We're doing coverage testing right now. With, with auto arms. Okay. Alright, let's take a look at this. Right one stopped. This is unacceptable. Yeah, I think, so, what's the other guy, uh, what was it, Mark, Mark, Mark Brownlee, Marquez Brownlee, I forgot how to pronounce his name, I mean, it's a meme ever since uh, Will Smith pronounced it wrong, but, like, his reviews are not good, because he doesn't do his research, like, they look good in terms of production value, but, like, Linus does the work and, and puts in effort and just, Mark Rober, Mark Rober's awesome, I'm not talking about Mark Rober, he's, he's cool. Easy smart. The other dude, the other tech reviewer. I forgot his name. Whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's not good. That's all I'm saying. Like, I remember one episode where he was talking about microwaves and he was just so wrong. He was saying that microwaves have a 
a short emission length which is why it's safe to stand outside a microwave and i'm like bro did you not take high school physics microwaves are blocked because of the metal grill the grill with the small holes and the small holes are are uh, smaller than the wavelength so it, it blocks the transmission of microwaves outside of the microwave like it can actually have a long emission range the military has a microwave weapon that can go i don't know many meters so after I heard that, I'm like, this guy does not have a clue what he's talking about. But it was not Mark Rober. He's awesome. Uh, he's freaking smart. <laughs> What's the other guy who made, like, the lightsaber? That guy is cool, too. I uh, just like watching people tinker around with stuff. I have a lot of respect for that. It's actually hard prototyping that sort of stuff. From scratch, it's always easier to take someone else's idea and, and pr improve upon it. But yeah, Mark Rober is awesome. Hacksmith Industries, yeah, I love that channel too. Any recommendations for characters in Eternal Return? Um, I don't know enough. Grape, I actually don't know enough. Watch the same thing is nice. Yeah, I I know from personal experience because uh. My my degree was electrical engineering, and I remember my final project, and it's like easy compared to Hacksmith Industries, and I failed it. But it's hard. <laughs> I had a, uh, I don't know, I had like many months to complete it. I still remember my project was a random number generator. You as Tony Badger have all oh, 32 terabyte using M2 4.0s. Ah, oh, but why would? Like the average person doesn't need that, you know. But I, you know, if someone gave it to for, gave it to me for free, I would definitely take it. <laughs> Thirty-two terabytes. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, great. Hacksmith is great. Um, but yeah, my project was a random number generator, and basically the physics professor wanted that. And um, Gen Four uh, M twos. M2 MVMEs are, are are the fastest. Gen, did I say Gen 4 or Gen 2? Gen 3 is the standard. The latest. And only a few MOBOs have Gen 4, I think. If I'm recalling correctly. Maybe I'm getting the numbers messed up. Who cares? <laughs> Alright. Let me adjust the placement of this arm. I need access to all of this, otherwise it's kind of slow. <laughs> you have to have PCI 4.0. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my motherboard has a Gen Gen 4 slot for an M2 drive. I, do I have a Gen 4? I don't. I have a Gen 3. Just a Samsung 970. What is the Hynix, right? Is a affordable Gen 4 S SSD, right? I think. All right. Oh, that one placement changed everything. All right, we're good now. We're good to go. Oh, you can do emos on YouTube too. All right, figures, figures. Oh, um, there was another guy I watched. I forgot his name. I don't watch, like, I go on sprees. I don't watch YouTube videos when they release it. I wait for, like, a couple months, and then I watch all of them just in one go. But there was a dude who was doing, like, metallurgy and refining. Oh, I forgot his name. I'll have to look it up again. But it was really interesting because he was just making his own furnace, his own crucible and just smelting metals. Uh, he did the one where it's like he filled the toilet up with mercury. And then it's like, will it flush? You know, that guy. And he just dips his hand into like a, the entire thing of mercury. And he's like, he pulls it out. He's like, I don't think I have any cuts, but I'll go to the hospital. Test for mercury poisoning later. I'm like, bro, what the <laughs> This guy has balls, man. <laughs> Uh, but he knew his way around metals and chemicals, and it was a really interesting channel to watch. You don't know? Yeah, I don't remember either. It was a smaller, relatively smaller channel, quote-unquote smaller. It still has, I think, over a million subs, but... 
uh yeah that dude was pretty i'm just saying that it's interesting because if anything goes horribly wrong in 2021 and we're somehow reset to the dark ages we'll have to figure out how to make our own alloys you know refine our own metals <laughs> make our own furnaces so you know i figured that kind of knowledge would be handy michael reeves yeah he's pretty okay michael reeves is funny all right like he's smart and funny and he's very entertaining but the level of tech that he does is like um it doesn't really match like hacksmith or the other guys uh it's just more it's more entertaining you know used to watch him for a while yeah he's, he's pretty solid okay we have this set placement set all right we can get rid of these now uh should i keep this yeah that's deleted yeah if you know of any more like tech channels or stuff that you watch feel free to recommend them to me up i'm always looking for more stuff to watch okay let's take a look back here yeah i was afraid this would happen it's unavoidable though surgery robot <laughs> no i'll i'll check it out okay let's kind of get the general if i put this in the midsection and the circles touching the cylinder mm, okay it's a little curious placement but all right i'll work next step is the wait yeah this is right the printing platform <laughs> is it recent yeah is it recent it's so safe i don't believe you dude <laughs> i don't think anything michael reeves makes is safe you don't know all right i'll i'll look it up later uh let's see printing table i don't need a big platform for this large platform b Hello, Mert. How you doing? Wait, why is this compound? Oh no, is it all reset? <sighs> okay, let me see. Oh, that's resin. Alright. Yes, hello indeed. How are you doing? Sorry, sometimes I forget to ask. Um... Also, if you have any questions on what I'm doing, feel free to let me know. I'll do my best to respond. Explain what's going on here. Okay, I changed my mind. I need an extra large platform C. I need storage space. Oh, this is a, a platforming alignment trick that I learned from Exotic Kitten. You package up a platform and you snap it to one alignment platform and then everything will be at about a 90 degree angle or 180 slash zero depending on what you want remember something happens in this world you go to the other world mm -hmm. <laughs> the shadow world sponsored by ray shadow legends i'm just joking <laughs> Yo, you know what's funny? I see that game advertised everywhere, but the funniest play ad placement for that game was an ASMR channel. Uh, perfectly aligned in terms of rotation, not like the placement in relation to the other platform, but if you package it up and place it here, it'll, it'll be snapping to a 90 degree angle or 180 or zero, you know? Uh, it'll work and then if you move it like that it should stay in that position if you unpackage it it might bounce around a little bit and get you know jiggled off but this is this is at the same angle as this 
Now, if you want to line the legs up, that's a different matter because you need true flat for that. It's not going to work without true flat. Um, as you can see, it's already sinking into the ground a little bit. Uh, like it sinks into the ground like here too because I'm at an angle compared to the core so perfect alignment in terms of positioning relative to other platforms not going to happen but rotational alignment you can do that so that's that's a little trick I learned but yeah you hate ASMR uh, I love ASMR I listen to ASMR when I'm working on videos I don't really like the the ones where you talk too much, I just like the sound. I want background noise when I'm working on vids to help me keep focus. Not when I'm editing podcasts, though. That's a uh, that's a no no. <laughs> it has to be absolutely silent. But all right, printing table. That's what I wanted. All right, small printer. It hurts your ears. Understandable, man. It's not for everyone. I don't know if 4 is in... Alignment... No, the alignment mod, what it does is it, it gives you a perpendicular perpendicular surface to the core. The only mod that gives you true... F oh. Oops, sorry. I pressed the button that I shouldn't have. Uh, the only mod that gives you true flat is the true flat block and creative mode. Or oh, where is it? The leveling block. So what the alignment tool does is when you, when I use it here, uh, it'll give me a perpendicular surface to the core. So if I use the alignment tool here, and then I use it all the way over there, uh, it'll be at different angles because it's it's working relative to the core, or at least that's what I think it does. That's what I heard it does. I haven't tested it out, so I would test it out yourself. But the alignment tool does not give you true flat. Uh, because uh, if I use true flat here, let me just show you real quick. Um, this is why I don't like the true flat block. So the true flat it just treats the planet as a cube. So when you use it, all right, so there it is. All right, this is because we're not at the north or south pole. That's perfectly aligned. Yeah, uh, the alignment tool will give you a surface that's perfect, perfectly aligned relative to the core. And then if you build your base off of that, you'll have a somewhat flat surface. Um, but the true flat block, the leveling block will give you perfectly aligned true flat. So this is at an angle because we are not at the north or south poles. If you're at the north pole and you use a true flat block, it'll be perfectly flat. Because just imagine the the planet as a cube, right? That's what that's what it does. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's me too. I thought the alignment tool would make it flat. So the best way, uh, anyways. I uh, can't tell what the what are those emotes, Grape? Uh, I'm using a TV as my second monitor, and it's kind of broken, so <laughs> I can't see anything. Uh, the best way to use the alignment tool is only to use it for your starting point uh, so what you want to do is let's say you have the alignment tool on pretend i have it on and you flatten like this area here after that take the alignment tool off otherwise it'll keep changing the surface relative to the core uh, i mean it makes sense if you want like a like a surface that will rotate around the globe have some curvature that's perfect then but uh, if you want it perfectly flat uh, Use an alignment tool on one spot, and then use that spot to branch out and start smoothing out. But you're never going to get it perfectly flat, because unless it's true flat, it's going to have little wrinkles. Like here, I don't know if you can tell, but there's some, like a little slight dip here. There's a slight dip here too. Uh, it's just really impossible to do true flat, even if you have a leveling block in the regular mode, because what you need is to change the default speed like i forgot brozelli i think has a very excellent video on this uh i forgot what the settings were but you need a certain default speed and a burst size to make 
uh, aligning to true flat a lot easier and you can't do that in, in normal mode so it's um it's not easy <laughs> it, even with the black anyways clouds die for the rain mm. 1.0 no, i think it was like 0.8 i think it's something slower maybe I don't know, I'll, I'll double check it i'll double check it later but see so one did a video but you didn't understand it oh that is that's okay um Honestly, it's a it's a little bit more of a hassle to use than you you know. I don't think it's worth using to be honest. Like I want it, but it's so annoying to use that I'm just not gonna use it right now. So you want to say one point Really? Was this recent? I'll have to watch it. I I like the Bro Zelly video uh, a lot better. Cause this I watched the one before the leveling block was introduced. But if you want to set 1.0, uh, that's usable then. Right here, there's a divot here. If I flatten this, it, it keeps creating a divot. <laughs> it just moves it over. Anyways. Okay. We need. Oh, I gotta go backwards. The backpack items are at the end. A small canister. Now we're gonna do a quick test here. Alright. Oh no, we need the resin. How to grow a 1911 plant? I, I, I don't know. What do you mean? How do I answer this question? Okay, now we're gonna test printing capacity. Oh, I need three uh, soil canisters on here. Otherwise, it's gonna get bottlenecked. Here. You go on. Okay, you go how to do it. <laughs> Great. Turn on. Okay. Turn on. All right. This is a resin to scrap conversion line. Yeah. You made my version in your vase. Thank you, dude. That's high praise. I'm glad you liked it. I have a medium wind turbine line. If you want to know about that, let me know. That one is way more efficient, but it takes way more work. So I thought people wouldn't want to do it. Okay. Now the thing I'm testing for here is, uh, oh, oh, hold on. Let me turn these arms off real quick. No, stop. Bad arm. Bad arm. All right. <laughs> nope, stop. Okay. Hmm. So the problem I had with this is the small printers are so fast that you only really need two, maybe one. I have four arms transferring resin, so uh, maybe I could use four, but if you notice, this arm can only grab from this stack of silos. There's no resin there, so we're hitting a, a bottleneck in terms of efficiency. I need the resin to be on all of these silos, or at least on both sides. Alright. Does it provide more scrapper item? Indeed it does. I think medium canisters is 0.5 scrap per canister of soil whereas a medium wind turbine farm will give you i think 1.5 scrap per canister of soil one point i don't remember the exact numbers but it's, it's vastly more efficient but the downside is it requires a lot of work so the amount of time you save from farming less soil is offset by the work you have to do so that's up to you. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head because it's been a while, but I'll show it to you real quick and you'll see why it's a hassle. I think my old farm is, is gone. I kind of updated it to be automated and it's actually worse 
believe it or not. So I'm gonna have to convert it back. Let me see real quick. Uh, yeah, they need to be picked up and unpackaged. Exactly. That takes a lot of time. There's other stuff too. Um, you need a 1911 seed from like. Are you talking about the pistol, or or the year? <laughs> Let me let me uh, load it up real quick. This is my my pride, my crowning achievement in Astroneer is my medium wind turbine farm. It's very efficient. It's a lot of work, but once you set it up properly, it's actually very quick. The plant, okay. It's a 1911 plant. Never know. Never knew that. Alright, it's not frozen. It's just taking a while to load. Just letting you know. It's my main save file. I think it's like 44 megabytes. So it just has a hard time loading it. I actually had to build... I'm on my new PC right now. Uh, I don't use it a lot. Search it up. I will. Uh, but... Let me get out. Alright, there you go. All right, here it is. Uh, I don't like this. I'm going to change this back. But it's the same thing. But I have to put soil into, what is this? Five different places, which I really don't like. I hate that. <laughs> I hate it so much. I have to bring it back to what it was. The world is barely 11 megabytes. Are you playing on console or PC? Because I would recommend keeping it as small as possible otherwise it is going to slow down like crazy and it's going to take forever to load uh oh ps4 gotcha uh yeah i will keep it as small as possible so if there's stuff that you're not using yeah like delete tethers uh delete resources um Delete modules that you're not using. If you left anything on planets, clean that up. Uh, it's, it takes forever. Like, I couldn't load my save file on my old PC, which has 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that is more than enough to play any game. Like, I play all my games on my old PC uh, to test it out and make sure that it runs okay. And I needed 32 gigabytes of RAM to load my save file on Astroneer. So I couldn't play Astroneer for like a couple of months. I was very sad <laughs> so yeah um and I, I appreciate this though because a lot of games will put a cap on items in your base in your save file uh, like no man's sky does it a lot of other games do it so that your save file doesn't get too big and slow the game but astroneer is like you can have as many items as you want as long as your whatever you're playing it on can handle it yeah 16 gigabytes of RAM couldn't load that this world that I'm on right now um, it used to be able to but they made an update around I think November or August of 2019 where after that update I couldn't load my world anymore they optimized the game somehow and and doing so in doing so they made it so that it wouldn't load um, so yeah you, you only need the memory to load the world. You don't need the memory to play the game because the memory usage doesn't exceed 4 gigabytes if I'm recalling correctly. Uh, it, it shouldn't go over that. But yeah, here... Oh, come on, great. <laughs> uh, you put the soil canisters in. As you can see, it's split. I have three facilities making glass and then two making ceramic. And then it's being loaded in. So I thought I could transfer it with auto arms, but it's actually slower. Um, the thing you need to do is though, you need to preload the scrapping area with a lot of packaged wind turbines. So I just make a set of packaged wind turbines here, ready to scrap. And then make sure that the center area is filled with ceramic and glass. And then you're good to go. And then when you start printing it out, it takes so long to print out that you can unpackage, shred, and then print new ones. 
and then it'll be ready to go again so medium slot auto arm would be great yeah it would i think they're probably gonna add one probably gonna add it. like a lot of people ha have been asking for it so um medium one thing that i would want to see so a couple of uh suggestions for easing automation like a, a medium auto arm like you said and then being able to shred packaged goods that would be incredible uh if i can just drop it into a shredder when it's packaged and it shreds it that would be amazing or uh an auto unpackager of some sort either one you like characters that don't have a lot of health in the beginning that's weird <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's that's a couple things. Um, but yeah, uh, that's why it's a lot of work. I have a video on my old build if you want to check it out. You can see that's a lot of work. Uh, you probably don't want to use it, but it's way more efficient. It's even faster than medium silos if you're doing work manually, but uh, it's just a lot of work like this. You're going to be doing it for like an hour straight, you know, if you want a lot of scrap. Yeah, there are no bottlenecks as long as you can do it quickly. Uh, you have to preload it though, remember. There's two steps you have to do to prevent bottlenecks. One is have a set of packaged wind turbines ready to go. And then fill the printing table with ceramic and glass. A full load and then you're ready to go because what you do is you unpackage and shred and then oh by the time it's done printing you'll be ready to go again you know? oh you did have a good point there coco unpacked items should have more scrap value hmm. we're just here online and seeing him playing astroneer who would have thought <laughs> who would have thought All right, I'm going to end soon in a few minutes. I, it's 2 p.m. for me right now in my time zone, U.S. Central, and I usually take a break from lunch. Um, but yeah, I will I'll return next week. Let me just take a look at this real quick. All right, this is how far we got today. I'm a little... These things take time, but... All right. We have this set up. This is good enough. Uh, we have these arms positioned good enough. These two can always reach these set of silos. And these two can reach these set. And then I can unload it here. Let's test this out real quick. Let me see the printing speeds. Hmm. Only... Oh, I can make do with two printers. Look at this. Just delete this then. Yeah, I can make do with two printers. Wow. The third soil center features a bottleneck here. Oh, yeah. Wait. Ooh, hold on a second. We have a problem. Yeah, let's remove this one. We're overproducing resin. Oh, good eye, Coco. Have you played Satisfactory? I think you will like that game. <laughs> let's remove this. We're overproducing. It can either add more arms here, or we can remove the centrifuge. Either one. And I don't want to add more arms because it gets really weird when there are too many arms in one area. You heard of, you heard of it? It's a, it's a game where literally all you do is build a factory. <laughs> it's great. You look at bottlenecks, you look at input-output efficiency. Um, so if you like this sort of stuff, I'll recommend checking it out. Factorio is another one. That one is more hardcore. Uh, satisfactory I like because it's more casual and you can get into it. There's multiplayer. Factorio is just like all all of that, all of, all the maths, you know. 
Okay, yeah, we, we pretty much figured out here two centrifuges, uh, four arms, two printers. That's that looks pretty good. We're not overproducing resin now, and we're not underprinting. All right, this is this is too many. <laughs> this is too many. All right, let's stop these. All right, you guys can stop, uh, chillax a little bit. Yeah, uh, good eye. But yeah, uh, if you're overproducing, delete it. If you're underproducing, you know, either add more arms or remove printers. Now we're good here. Okay. Now we gotta take this and scrap it. Oh, this is a bottleneck here because shredders are really slow. Um, figure this out next time. All right, we're, we're off to a good start though. This is relatively quick if you look at this. See, this is why automation is great. Uh, if you can make a big enough production line, it's just, even though it's inefficient, you're just gonna produce way more than you need. Uh, yeah, I think Z1 has videos on a lot of games. I think he has No Man's Sky videos too. Satisfactory is definitely pretty fun. Uh, it's more fun if you have someone to play with though. So I recommend looking at the videos and see if it's the type of game you want to play. It's because it's all literally just factories, dude. So if you're going to get bored of that, uh, you know, maybe pick it up when it's cheap. On sale. But if you have someone, he has no miss guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I I remember Z1 having No Man's Sky videos. Uh, I would recommend. I don't know if you heard of the channel. Let's game it out. I would watch. Let's game it game it game it out. It's a satisfactory video. It's hilarious. <laughs> I'll give you some ideas of stuff you can do. Let me see. Let me go find his channel real quick. It's one of my favorite gaming channels. <laughs> uh, he used to be great still plays, but he's been making... Uh, not, not the videos that I want to watch anymore, but he's still funny. Let's game it out. You have? Yeah, dude. Check out his rap video. It's hilarious. Satisfactory if you're bored, you can... Yeah, inspirational. Let's game it out. Yeah, yeah. Let's game it out. I like it because um, he's really good at breaking down games. Like he 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 produces funny content, but if you look at the stuff he does behind the scenes to get to that point, he's very good at breaking down games in a short amount of time. You watch both of them, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, his raft though, his raft video is hilarious, but he doesn't know how to play raft. He played Astroneer. I remember the Dynamite video. Yeah. Uh, that one, he probably used Creative Mode or he farmed it with his Discord server. I think that's what I heard. Because you can't make that much Dynamite in a short amount of time. So, that guy though. A uh, lot of respect. Also, I love it because when people like that play games like Astroneer, like millions of people watch it and then there's more people that know the game exists. So I'm really grateful for these uh, content creators who can get a large following and kind of expose them to these more indie games that, you know, don't get a lot of exposure. So hopefully some of those people check the game out. Um, by the way, I love Raft. <laughs> yeah, but uh, me, and, me, and, me and Buddy, we always play Raft and make a full run from scratch from a new save file every time there's a new update. So we're Raft experts. In terms of kind of speed running the game, but yeah, 600 meter tube and he just launched himself. Hilarious. All right, I'm gonna end it here. I'm gonna go off and eat lunch. I'll be back next Saturday. Um, I do stream on Twitch, but I don't stream Astroneer, so I don't I don't advertise it. But if you want to know, my name is Ducky O'Brien on Twitch. Let me let me. Say my thanks and get out of here. I don't. I usually have a bot that keeps track of people who chat, but I don't have one for YouTube, so I'll have to make one. But anyways, 
we got olivier underscore ex esx thanks for dropping by dude we got coco lol appreciate you dropping by dude bentley massingale nice to see you little gamer x all these guys are polite they're like how are you doing they always say hello thank you man let me tell you uh people on youtube are way more polite than the people that i meet on twitch strangers i mean all the people that i know on twitch are really nice and awesome and when strangers drop in sometimes they're a little uh Mm, don't have the social interaction with new people down yet. <laughs> Zago Jovanovic. Zago Jovanovic. Uh, that's great. Thank you for wrapping by too. Argus X77. This guy's supportive. Always shows up whenever I'm on. Appreciate that to you. Let me see if I missed anyone. There, uh, Mert. Oh, I can't read the names because my, my TV's broken. Mert. Ye why mert why something <laughs> thanks for dropping by all right i think i got everyone I'm just scrolling through chat all right I tag along every saturday good to hear dude if you want to see anything let me know when the new update comes out uh coco i'll be playing that i'll make an update video on that as well uh most of the videos that do well on my channel, I make whatever I want, all right? I do games coverage. Those don't get a lot of views and people don't care about it. That's fine, but I care about it. But most of the videos that do well are my Astro Your Update videos. So I'll make an update video on that. Uh, but yeah, thanks for dropping by, dude. Appreciate it. Hope you have a nice weekend. I'll be back this same time, 12 to 2 p.m. U.S. Central Time next Saturday. All right, catch you guys later. I'm going to end the stream here. You can't get everything from Soila. Yeah, you cannot get everything. What's up? Uh, you cannot get uh, Astronium, and you cannot get Gas. But everything else you can get. Uh, I have a production line that makes nanocarbon alloy, minus the gas, obviously, uh, from soil. So I do have that. I do have alloys down. It's really complicated. Uh, but you can make everything except for astronier, um, astronium sorry, and gas. That's it. So the astronium, I'm just going to have a thumper in the core of some planet somewhere. And I can have a long chain of auto arms kind of ferry it out. I'm going to experiment with that. And the gas is you just have to stockpile yourself. So, yeah. Um... I don't know where my nanocarbon alloy production line went, but let me link a quick video that I made if you want to look at that. Um, it took a while to plan it, but I'm really sad that uh, I can't find my build in my save file. Okay, yeah, I found it. I'm going to end soon. Here's my nanocarbon alloy production line. I think that's the right video. If you want to check that out, hopefully that gives you some ideas. Uh, I'm simulating in creative mode, obviously, so. All right, hopefully that gives you some ideas, dude. Yeah, no problem, man. Let me know if it helps you out or if you have any questions. You can catch me on Discord. Um, that's where or you can just leave a comment on my youtube channel whatever you want um whatever is more works out for you all right see you later coco nice meeting you zymo i'm gonna peace out it's around two this is when i usually take a, a break from lunch i'll be back next saturday all right yeah i hope you guys have a nice weekend i'm gonna end the stream here